Hello everyone, I am Irina or Verdan Diskult. Welcome to my channel on history and language and uh, today I have for you a short video discussing a couple of nobility terms such, such as king, queen, but also um, adding to this several other nobility titles which are still in use in British society uh, nowadays. So on my Facebook page, um, which I linked in the description if you are curious about that, I had an interesting question uh, from someone uh, wondering about the meaning of the term uh, queen, whether it initially meant uh, just a woman. And the answer is in fact yes, and I uh, thought maybe I could make a short video about the whole, uh, the whole deal, about the etymology of these, um, of these words. So if you also have ideas regarding something I could uh, talk about or something I could research, yeah, either on Norse uh, culture, history, early Middle Ages or Germanic languages, please leave a comment um, and uh, I will do my best to try to investigate, take into account your proposal and um, make a short YouTube video. Okay, so let's start with the term king. What is the etymology of the word king? Well, basically it is a contraction of an old English word, which was kuning. Kuning in old English was um, a ruler, basically. Um, it was also used um, as a title. It comes from a proto-Germanic word, kuningas, which gave us words in different Germanic languages, such as König in German or Koninger in Old Norse um, uh, slash Icelandic. Um, koning in Dutch and so on. Um, there is a very high probability that this word kuning um, has to do with the word kun, so kin, family, race. We could interpret uh, the king in the sense as a leader of his people. Notice that race, I mean here a social uh, group, a social cultural group, so um, nothing to do with um, uh, physical appearance. Um, Another theory possibility would be another Germanic word meaning noble birth. So uh, king would be someone um, with um, um, a um, uh, history of great lineage, a descendant of a noble race. Also very interesting is the fact that in Gothic, which is another uh, Germanic language, uh, unfortunately extinct, an Eastern Germanic language, uh, we do not have a cognate, so a similar word to king, we have instead the word theodans. This word, on the other hand, does have a cognate in Old English, theoden. Theoden being also uh, an important character in J.R. Tolkien's work um, as the uh, leader of uh, Rohan. Um, so Theoden, uh, Theodans meant, um, also meant something like a chief of a tribe, um, a prince, if you will. Other languages have borrowed this term from uh, Germanic or slash proto-Germanic. So for example, we have in Finnish uh, Kuningas, we have in Old Church Slavonic um, Kunegu, we have in Russian Knyaz, we have in Lithuanian Kunigas. Um, from the 14th century onwards, we also have in English, this meaning of a king as being someone um, who is superior in a certain uh, field. King of, I don't know, some, some sport, for example, or of some specific um, ability. Um, all right, so we should remember the fact that king initially was not used for, um, you know, in the sense of monarchy, for nation states, because that was a a later statehood uh, development. It just meant a chief of a tribe, um, of a clan, and then um, they were chiefs of the states they, that were founded uh, with the passage of, um, of time. And uh, it, um, the um, uh, more imposing meaning was gained once um, we have nation states in history, although after nation states, um, the term king was uh, used to describe other statehoods such as um, African clans. Yes, leaders of African clans were also considered um, kings. Okay, so the pair of the word is queen. 
Queen is also a very fascinating word because it means um, a female noble, a consort of a king, um, a woman reeling in her own right, but also simply a woman, simply a wife. Um, in uh, Old English, the term is quen, and it comes from a Proto-Germanic word as well, uh, quenis. Uh, we have several terms, you know, um, descendants of this um, um, old word in Old Saxon, we have quen. In um, Old Norse, we have quen. We also have words... Oh, in Norwegian, we have a quorn in some dialects, but there is also the sense, the more general sense of um, woman. Um, we have, for example, kvina in, uh, in Swedish, um, kuna in uh, Old Norse, um, Icelandic and Norwegian, and um, kvina is actually uh, kvena, which is a plural genitive form in Old Norse of the word kuna. Okay, um, so I, su I suspect that the initial sense was a broader one, as, the, uh, as a wife, as a woman, and then it became specialized as um, the wife of a king. Um, in old, this uh, is suggested in Old Norse by other terms, for example, kvanfang, which means a marriage, so catching the woman is to get married, um, or uh, the word for unmarried or widow, kvanlaus. Um, it also gained, um, you know, um, a sense of um, uh, greatness uh, or uh, the nobility in the sense of uh, rather spiritual or um, emotional nobility, as well as king in the, the later uh, Middle Ages. Um, very interesting is the fact that English is one of the few Indo-European languages where we do not have a term for queen which is derived from the term for uh, king, so from the masculine. The feminine is not derived from the masculine, it is a, a whole new, um, new word. Um, in um, uh, Scandinavian languages, for example, we um, also have a separate term, so to speak. We have drotning, for example, or droning. But this is derived from another word, so not the word for king, but the word for uh, master, uh, drotin. Um, no, Old-fashioned, no longer uh, in use, but still it is a masculine form that, that gave the feminine form. So this is pretty fascinating. Um, we have from the 14th century the chess piece um, with uh, its uh, attributes, yeah, the queen going in um, um, every direction. Um, and we also have the card in the card game, it's the queen from the 16th century. Okay, um, like I said, I will also bring into discussion a few words which um, refer to nobility titles still preserved um, nowadays. Yeah, so in um, British uh, slash English society. So first of all, we have Earl. Um, Earl is Earl in Old English. And um, initially the sense was, the poetic sense, let's say, um, was that of a warrior, uh, of a brave man, of a bold man. And um, later on it um, uh, got to mean, um, you know, nobleman, um, especially with reference to um, a nobleman of Danish uh, descent, so stemming from the period where uh, parts of the British Isles were under Danish um, control. And uh, we have here uh, a cognate in Old Norse, which is Jarl. So Jarl is the um, upper class, let's say. This is kind of like a viceroy um, under uh, Danish uh, dynasty. And the correspondent, so in Latin, it would be, I think, the correspondent of the um, uh, title um, Comus. Um, okay, what else do we have? Well, we have um, Baron. We have Baron. Uh, this is a title from the uh, 1200s. Um, there are a lot of titles. So some of them were lost, some of them survived. But there were a lot of titles which were um, actually um, stemming from continental uh, Europe um, via the French-Norman connection. So Baron, as a member of nobility, he was of a lower 
uh, rank um, is a term that comes from from old French, yeah, so baron. And um, again, initially it um, um, had this meaning of um, a virtuous man, like a virtuous husband, a lord. Um, it might have something to do with um, the uh, late Latin baro, as in um, a guy. Uh, we have in, in Spanish, for example, uh, baron, yes, for a, a boy, a uh, young boy. Um, could it also have been a Germanic source? That's also a possibility, because in Frankish, for example, we have the word baro, which means um, a free man. Um, this might also have merged with a local word, um, an old English word. Um, I mean by that the word bern, um, which in its turn also means nobleman. So it's very interesting to see how um, these words, these meanings um, merged with one another and um, um, determined something else uh, in history with the passage of time. Okay. Um, another term which is in use nowadays is Viscount. Um, Viscount, um, so this is also from Old French, um, is from Old French and um, via medieval Latin, yeah, because it comes from uh, Vice Comus, so Vice is like a deputy, uh, vice something, and um, uh, Comus was, yeah, so, something like a member of the uh, imperial court and um, uh, the title itself is actually a little uh, later from the uh, 15th century century okay now for the ladies um, we have in use marquess um, rather the feminine uh, part than the marquise the masculine part uh, this also comes from old French as uh, suspected, and um, Marquis, uh, Marquis was the prefect of Marche. Um, this was a frontier. Yeah, it comes from the Latin Marca, which was a frontier territory. Um, we can compare it with the term uh, Margrave, Markgraf, um, so the ruler of a border territory. And later on, it um, came to signify this um, um, rank somewhere below duke let's say um and now the last one is actually duke so duke is pretty obvious it comes from uh, latin uh, dux um also via um, old french um also from the 12th century i think it um, uh, becomes um, well known as a, um, a title so what what is dux actually dux is um, initially a commander a governor of a province uh, it comes from the verb ducere, which is to lead, and we can also find it in the German correspondent Herzog, actually in the second part of the word zog, dux, um, it's actually the same word. Um, and um, since the 14th century, it actually becomes uh, the uh, hereditary nobleman of the highest rank. Uh, and it is also used to translate other European titles, um, such as Knyaz, yeah, the Russian Knyaz. Um, and um, maybe we should also, also mention the fact that in some parts of Europe it was actually the sovereign title, so there was nothing above it. So we have examples from uh, Normandy, from uh, Burgundy, uh, from Lorraine, yeah, so also very interesting. Okay, as a bonus at the end of the video, a couple of phrases with the uh, Kings and queens. Actually, I have four phrases with um, king and one phrase with queen. Don't feel discriminated. Um, okay, so with king, I think uh, an interesting phrase would be um, a king's ransom, for example. So if you want to say that something is very uh, pricey, uh, expensive, extravagant, you can say it's a king's ransom. So this uh, plane ticket to Thailand cost me a king's ransom. Yeah, so um, an incredible amount. Um, then, um, if you want to say about someone that um, they gained a very important position in some um, uh, particular area, you can say about them that they have become uh, the king of the hill. So, you, you've become the king of the hill in your office, finally, you know, so someone uh, very important. 
um, about a conceited person, a very proud person, you can uh, say that they are as cocky as the king of spades. So that's why John never makes any friends at school, because he's always acting as cocky as a king of spades, so very conceited. Um, and the last phrase I find um, cute <laughs> with um, uh, the word king, uh, a cat may look at a king. So you tell this when you want to draw attention to the fact that you also have uh, rights, you know. So why, why is he the only one speaking in this assembly? A cat may look at a king. So we are all equal, we all have rights, even cats and kings. Okay, and the last phrase for today, um, with queen, uh, uh, queen's weather. So I was thinking about Queen's weather because it's uh, nearly spring or it's um, uh, a very uh, shy attempt, at least where I live, um, at um, um, spring. So um, if the weather is better and it's stopped raining, uh, you can say that uh, it is a positive development. So Queen's weather. All right. So I hope you found this uh, at least a tad interesting. Um, or as interesting as for you to like and subscribe my, uh, to my channel, uh, it would really mean a lot to me. So please follow me for other videos and um, I also have, I think, 25, 25 or 26 so far. So please make sure to check them out uh, as well. Thank you so much for your support, for your help. Uh, take care and see you soon.